Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining. That was good. Very fast. People are joining. That's wonderful. And as you guys keep joining, that's wonderful. Guys, keep when when you keep joining this uh, link, why don't you subscribe to this channel as well so that you can get the information of future free sessions from us. So make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel as well so that you can get the information. Okay, very good, very good. So we have uh, Abdul Rapta here, we have Ankit Kumar, we have Rifat Nabi, we have Ahmed Aziz. Okay, who else is here? Okay, very good. So, Hisham, Devang, Devang, Suhoor, Rabia Zubair, Bibek, Raj Parajuli, Abdul Hakim Muhammad, Kajal Sarkar, Samara Umar, Umar Kudus, Gasak Kareem. So thank you guys. Thank you, Dr. Rubina from Kashmir. Okay, very good, very good. So guys, uh, we have Amna Asif, Asma Jama, Nadi, ne sorry, Neelam Kumari, uh, Samara Umar, uh, and uh, Muhammad Suhail, and Mahanur Abbasi, Abbasi. Okay. So what is the topic today? That's what you want to know. First of all, let me introduce myself, guys. I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed. I am the program director here at the California Institute of Behavioral Neurosciences and Psychology. And this is an uh, online institute, an online training program on research, writing, and publishing. This is a two-month program in which we give you a research project, a real research project. That will be a real research paper. You will work on, a, uh, on that paper with us We'll teach you how to do it, and you will write it and complete it, and you publish it, and you become a published author. So as uh, it's like a driving training school. Like in a driving training school, they give you a real car to drive on a real road with real traffic, and you become a driver, right? In the same fashion, here we give you a real research paper that will be a real research project. You will learn to write side by side, and you will write it and complete it, and you publish it, and you become a published author while learning side by side. So this is what happens in this program. And you guys are here of, uh, in the trial class of that program. So in this program, you become a published author. You become a published research author. So this is what this program will do to you. It will make you a published research author. You will become a published author in just a matter of few months. Okay? This is what this program is all about. And um, this is a trial class, okay? And I, I can still see people are still joining. So have you all subscribed to this YouTube channel already? And the reason I kept it on YouTube channel, the reason was that with so many people, if I do on Zoom, it becomes so difficult when people have questions. So it's so difficult to, um, answer everyone with audio and somebody else comes in. It's become such a messy situation. So that's why YouTube is a blessing that I can share this link on YouTube and I can talk with you guys and we can do this session. So everyone now is here. Okay, not a strong strength today. I was expecting more people today, but it's, uh, uh, you know, that's fine. Whoever is here, you guys should we benefited. So now the benefit of this free trial class is many of you who are interested in joining our Be a Published Author program, they will get an idea of what this training program is all about. They will get an idea of what this training program is all about. And if they want to join the pro program after the session, they are most welcome to do that. That's number one. Second thing is, if you cannot, for some reason, join this program, you will still take something today. 
you will definitely take something with yourself today. So it will not be a waste of time. It will not be a waste of your energy. You will still learn something and you will take some valuable lessons today. And it will, it will make you kind of unique and distinct because you will have more knowledge about research related stuff than other people that you know. Okay, so this session is a free trial. The whole course has a fee. So this is a question by Samara, Samara Omar. So I'm telling you that this session is a free trial class of the big program, the two month hands-on research writing and publishing program in which you become a published author. That program has a fee. And that's why we, we, did, we decided to do this free trial class for all of you who want to join and enroll into this full program, okay? So this is free. This trial class is free. Okay. So we are doing the first session that is usually the first class of this program. So that's what you will see here. And I will conduct that session. I'll teach you something. I hope that you guys learn something. And those who don't want to enroll into the full program, right? For example, um, Abdurab, if you don't want to enroll into the full program, that's fine. You will still get a lot of valuable lessons in this session. So we will talk about it. There are multiple options of the program and the pricing. So we'll talk about it. The real thing is not the, not the pricing right now. The real thing is my goal is to teach you guys something. And uh, so you guys take something with you today. So that you guys take something valuable with you today. So let's talk about this. Be a published author program. And uh, it's a two month hands-on research writing and publishing program. And this is the class one. This is the first class. I hope it works. Class one of the Be a Published Author program. So what will we learn today here? Everyone is here now, right? You all know who I am. Everyone knows who I am. Anyone who doesn't know who I am? Okay, I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed. I am the program director here at the California Institute of Behavioral Neurosciences and Psychology. Guys, I'm a neuroscientist by profession. I have written so many papers, 45, I don't know how many papers, written some books as well. Another book is coming nowadays. Um, probably next month it will be published. And uh, so many other um, things I have done. I've been on TED Talks twice. So if you type my name on YouTube, type my name on Google, you will find a lot of information and videos about me. So you will find a lot of information. Now, this is the thing that, uh, so I created this program many years ago, five, six years ago, and then we launched it. Now it's the fifth year, we, we launched it and successfully we have made so many of you, so many of students as published authors. And this program has changed their lives. Those students, because of their publications, they got into great residency programs all around the world, in the US, in Canada, in the UK. And they got a wonderful career in other countries in Europe and in Australia as well, uh, European countries, and even in Africa and in India, Pakistan, China, everywhere around the world. So we have uh, proudly, we can proudly say we have served people from almost all nations now. In fact, we had a student from Lesotho. I didn't even know that there is a country, Lesotho, and uh, that was a new thing for me. And then we, we started getting people from other African countries, and I started to know about African countries. I didn't know about African countries at that time. So, so we have students from all parts of the world, and we are proud of it. So I'm glad you guys are here, and you guys will, you guys will learn. And uh, this is an introduction, uh, so I just wanted to make sure you guys know me. And you guys, uh, you guys uh, uh, will will learn the basics of research. Okay, so s people want to know a little bit about uh, um, CIBNP. So it's California Institute of Behavioral Neurosciences and Psychology. We teach people how to write and publish papers. We teach people how to do data analysis and statistics, and we teach them how to 
how to um, you know uh, study um, research methodology, research uh, design, research methods, all of those things, research related courses and research related information you can find on our website and uh, on in our courses. And uh, um, previously I conducted an introduction to research uh, free certificate course. I don't know how many of you attended it. Okay, so uh, just tell me um, if you guys want to attend uh, future free courses as well. And by the way, okay, thank you, Naman. And uh, by the way, um, tell me please, uh, how many of you are medical doctors who are applying for US residency? Because mostly this program, uh, this program becomes very, very useful for medical doctors. I'll take another pen. This program becomes very, very useful for the following students. Doctors who are applying for US residency, taking US MLEs or PLAB, going to the UK, or if they are applying for Canadian residency. So mainly this program helps the doctors and Pharmacists, pharmacology students as well. And psychologists. All of you can publish papers. Hi, a student from Congo is here. And yes, we had students who were dentists. A very good student, she published her paper recently. She was a dentist. So yes, so all of these professions need publications. In fact, engineering students also need publications. In fact, the MBA students also need publications. In fact, we had a student from MBA. We had a student uh, from veterinary medicine. Veterinary, well, veterinary medicine. Is it the correct spelling? I don't know. Anyways, so, veterinary uh, medicine and we have students from microbiology, social science also, yes. And uh, agriculture can, all, I mean, you know, every field needs uh, publication. So every field needs publication and the promotions are dependent on publications. So just wanted to make sure that we have this, these people present today. Very good. And nursing, yes, absolutely. So, okay, Saba is a doctor, okay, and uh, Rabia Azam is a doctor. So, guys, you guys can join this program and be a published author and be more competitive for the U.S. residency and uh, or or U.K. foundation. So, anyways, now let's start. So, what will we learn today? Basics of research. We will learn because this is about Veter veterinary, okay, veterinary, that's how you spell it, okay. So the I comes uh, before N. Okay, okay, thank you, uh, Atiya. Not my field, so I don't know. Engineering student, okay, very good, Usman. Neurologist, we have a neurologist here, very good, thank you. So you, now, what will you learn? What is research? Always start with the basics of research, what is research? Then we will talk about research design. Before you start to work on your research project, you should know research design. If you don't know the difference between different kinds of research articles, then it is, it is difficult for you to write a paper. Then, the structure of your paper. Then we'll talk about the topic selection. These are some highlights of the first class that you guys learn in the first class. So let's talk about it. So what is research? Always 
Many of you who have attended my sessions before, they know I always start with the definition of research. What is research, guys? Research is in every field. No field in the world is without research. This is because of research that you guys can see me live today. Somebody did research in IT and uh, software, and now we are able to see each other like this. And I can, I can talk with you here in California and different parts of the world, people from all parts of the world, Nepal, India, Pakistan, and Congo, they all can hear me today because of the research in technology. So the definition of the research is, what is research? Research is the quest of knowledge. Yeah, absolutely, very good. Search of knowledge, quest of knowledge. All of you who have attended my previous sessions, they know this definition. And we have from Malaysia as well. Okay, so quest of knowledge, search of knowledge. Sonia Luhana is from Malaysia. Okay, so this is clear. Everyone is clear about the definition. Try to be very fast and finish it in an hour so that you guys can really relax and go home and, uh, you know, sleep, whatever. Diff different countries have different time zone right now. It's late night in some countries. Like in China, it will be late night. Okay, so uh, research basic, uh, re and in Malaysia, it will be late night as well. And uh, research design. So we'll talk about research design. So what is research design? You need to know different kinds of studies. You need to know different types of studies. Different types of studies so that when you come across different kinds of studies during your research project, you should know. You should know what are different study designs. So to understand the study design, to understand the study design, we draw this triangle. This is not a triangle, actually. This is a pyramid. And we call it as evidence pyramid or study design pyramid. Evidence pyramid or, st or study design pyramid. So what is this pyramid all about? This pyramid will tell you all possible kinds of studies. All possible kinds of studies. If you understand this, you understand the whole research world. Research will become so easy for you. That's why I want all of you to focus here. This study design pyramid has certain studies. Like at the bottom, we have in vitro test tube research. In vitro test tube research. Then we have animal research, in vitro test tube research, then we have animal research, then we have ideas, opinions, and editorials. Ideas, opinions, and editorials. Then comes case reports and series. Case reports and series. And then comes the cross-sectional study. Then comes the case control study. Then comes the cohort study, then comes the clinical trials. Clinical trials. And then comes the systematic reviews and meta-analysis. So now, for example, when you enroll into our program, when you enroll into our program, what kind of research papers can you write with us here and publish them? You cannot do a clinical trial sitting home. You cannot do a cohort study sitting home. You cannot do a case control study sitting home. Actually, nowadays, they are doing it uh, uh, because of COVID. But still, you know, you need to talk with the patients. You need to go to the patients. 
So it's not the best way to do it. Cross-sectional, yes, you can do it. Case reports and series, if you have a case, yes, you can do it. Ideas, opinions, editorials, letter to the editors, yes, you can, you can do it. Uh, animal research, you can't. In vitro, test tube research, you can't. Unless you have an animal lab in your home that is authorized by the government. So highly unlikely, highly unlikely. So what about this? And systematic reviews and meta-analysis. And these are the topmost evidence. Systematic reviews, that's, that's what you will learn in this training program to how to write a systematic review and publish it. And then the choice is yours, whether you want you would like to write a systematic, systematic review or you want to go with a traditional review. So the choice is absolutely yours. But we'll teach you the most difficult kind of research writing. The reason is that if you know how to write the most difficult kind of research article, any kind of article writing becomes so easy for you. So that's what I want all of you to remember. Now, what does this pyramid show? What does this pyramid show? It shows the strength of evidence. The studies at the bottom, the studies at the bottom are the weak evidence and the studies on the top are the strong evidence, strong evidence. As you move up the pyramid, the strength of evidence increases. As you move up the pyramid, the strength of evidence increases. Now the question is why these studies are weaker and why these studies are strong? Can anyone tell me about it? Why these studies are weak and why these studies are strong? Who can tell me this? Can anyone tell me why these studies at the bottom are weak and why these studies at the top are strong evidence? Nobody has any answer? Yes, so what does that mean? Why the evidence is weak here? That's what I'm asking. Why evidence is strong here? Anyone? Looks like nobody has the answer to this question. So there are two reasons. Two reasons, guys. I'm reading everyone's comments. Okay, so very close. You guys are close, but not correct. Um, not correct, no, 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 no. Number one reason is the chances of bias. There are more chances of bias at the bottom. Chances of bias reduce on the top. And this is more related in clinical sciences, in healthcare in, in industry. It's more related to human, I mean, I mean, sorry, the le it is less related to human, human treatment. The last two, for example, they are less related to human treatment, animal research in vitro, but it is more related to human treatment. For non-medical students, now for non-medical students, like geologists we have here, we have mathematicians, we have other people here, so now, these two are not relevant to you. This is not in your syllabus. This is not for you. Your research pyramid starts here. Your research pyramid starts here. So your weakest evidence is this. Ideas, opinions, and editorials. You have case reports. Yes, you have cross-sectional studies. You have case control. And you can have cohort studies but not mostly done. And you can have clinical trials, but we don't call them clinical trials then. We call them as experiment. And then we have 
systematic reviews, and meta-analysis. The strongest evidence. Now, let's talk about these studies. So if you have a slight bit of idea, basic idea about these studies, you will be able to easily differentiate these studies from each other. And when you start writing your paper, when you find some papers, when you're writing systematic review, you will exactly know which study you have in your hand and you will be able to better write your paper. Or you will be able to write paper in a better, better way. So in vitro test tube research, as the name suggests, vitro means glass, in vitro and test tube. So in vitro test tube, in vitro test tube research, as the name suggests, test tube, in vitro test tube. So have you seen test tube research? People doing research in the lab, holding test tubes. That's what they show in the movies and on TV advertisements. And everyone thinks that this is how everyone does research. No, not everyone does research like this. This is called in vitro test tube research. And uh, they are microbiology research studies. They are studies on um, bacteria and uh, different, different things. So not all research will need test tube. And this is the weakest evidence. So those are one of the studies, one of the research designs done in the lab. Absolutely, biochemistry, absolutely. And simple chemistry. Yeah, so simple chemistry student. Yeah, you, you will see this. Simple chemistry students will see this and this too. Very good, Abdurab. Now, animal research, as the name suggests, animal research will have animals involved. So what are the animals that we usually have in the labs? Mice, rats, guinea pigs, frogs, rabbits, monkeys. So those are Those are the animal study bias. Maybe, for example, if I write a paper about USA, so because I live in the US, I could be biased because I love this country. So that's, that's why this is a weak evidence because we can be biased. That's why it is weak. In every field, you will have ideas, opinions, and editorial articles written by the experts in the field. And they can be weak evidence because they are somebody else's opinions. Now then comes the case reports and case series. Case reports and case series. So what is case report and case series? Case reports are when you are studying one person, one unit, Person, place, or thing. Anything can be studied. When you are studying one thing, one unit, one unit, it could be a person, place, or thing. You are studying that. Everything about that particular unit in an attempt to generalize to the whole population. Let's say you are studying one sportsman. Let's say you are studying the boxer Muhammad Ali. So you're studying Muhammad Ali as a case report. So you collect all the evidence related to Muhammad Ali and you try to generalize it on other boxers too. That because Muhammad Ali did that, so possibility is other people will do that. That's why it's a weak evidence because you're just talking about one person. You never know that Muhammad Ali did that because maybe that was his own personality. So case reports, now how do we collect data for case reports? We collect data through multiple sources. So this is a unique feature of case reports that when you collect information from multiple sources, that's called case report. Case study actually, that's called case study. And when it's published in medical or healthcare sciences, we call it as case report. So make sure you know the difference. Case study, if it's not published, it's case study. In other fields, it's known as case study, but in medical field, it's known as case report once it's published. 
So the difference, the, the main feature of a case study is multiple sources of data. That means that you interview people, that's one source. You go and check internet, second source. You go and check libraries, third source. So multiple sources of data is a must requirement for case studies. Very few people know this. Very, very, I asked this to expert scientists and they don't know these answers. So you are automatically in top 1% people now after hearing this. So make sure you don't forget. The unique feature, hallmark of case study is, the hallmark of case study is multiple sources of data. Now case series is when you have more than one person, when you have more than one person, that's case series. Usually when you have only one group and they are observational studies mostly. But and these studies can be converted into any of these designs later. And we'll talk about that some other day in a, in a study design, a research design course. And now these ones are known as observational studies. These three, sorry, these three, cross-sectional, case control, and cohort. They are known as observational studies. You must have heard the word observational studies. So listen to me once again. We are done with case reports now. Now we are coming to a new topic, observational studies. Observational studies, let me make it clean and clear. Observational studies. These three are observational studies, cross-sectional, case control, and cohort. So cross-sectional studies are when you are studying what is happening at one point in time. What is happening at one point in time? And they are also known as prevalence, prevalence studies. Prevalence studies. Prevalence studies, you study what is happening at one point in time, and you also call it as, you also call it as, um, you know, survey studies. So cross-sectional studies are prevalence studies. You study the prevalence of certain thing, or like, for example, the census of a country. When they, calc they count the number of people in a country, that's called as cross-sectional study. They're seeing how many people live in this country, how many people live in this area, or you do a study how many people live in particular area who are smokers, that's again case uh, cross-sectional. And there is another one that is also their longitudinal study, longitudinal study. The difference between longitudinal study, we don't put it in the, in the pyramid, but you should know. You should know that longitudinal studies is that when you see what is happening at multiple points in time and cross-sectional studies when you see what is happening at one point in time. I'll repeat again. Cross-sectional studies, when you see what is happening at one point in time, and longitudinal studies are what you, when you see what is happening at multiple points in time. Now, case control. Case control. Case control is when you go into the past of a patient. Let's say past. Two thousand and one. You go into the past of a patient. Let's say you have you are in a hospital. You have patients of lung cancer. So you have of patients, lung cancer patients and non-lung cancer patients. So you go into their past and you see how many of them were smokers. So how do you go into their past? Yes, Jangir Khan is right. Uh, Cross-sectional studies are also known as snapshots. Snapshots. So in case control, you go into the past. How do you go into the past? By checking clinical records, medical records, electronic medical records, interviews, history, talking to a patient, 
talking to the family members, talking to the pr primary physician. You go into the past of a patient and you see the history, how many of them were smokers. And then you can say, okay, so people who were smokers, 50% of them developed the lung cancer. And, or you can say 80% of them developed lung cancer, 20% did not. So you can say that, okay, because lung cancer patients were smokers, so we can say that smoking is associated with lung cancer. So this is known as retrospective. This is known as retrospective study. Case control is a retrospective study. Retrospective means you are going into the past. Retrospective study. So cross-sectional is not retrospective, but case control is retrospective. Now, cohort, cohort is something when you go into the future and it is prospective. Now, many of you would say, oh, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Why is he saying that co cohort is prospective? I know there is a cohort that is retrospective. So why is he lying to us? Why is he, is he? Lying to us. Is there anyone who is saying that? So remember, cohort studies can be of two types. Prospective cohort in which you go into the future. Retrospective study in which you go into the past. 1999. Future 2030. So how do you go into the future? Let's say you are looking at a population. They have a risk factor. You go to a population, they have a risk factor. They live in an environment where there is some kind of carcinogen. So they have a risk factor carcinogen. So now you want to see the effects of carcinogen. So you follow them up for next two years, four years, five years, 10 years. And you found out that 20% of them developed cancer. So you can say, okay, this carcinogen develops cancer, 20% chance of developing a cancer, or 20% people can develop lung cancer or XYZ cancer. So you went into the future, absolute future. Case reports are observational. Yes, they can be counted as observational. They can be. But usually not, usually not, because the difference is survey samples, survey, survey studies, or asking questions, or interviews, any one of those. You don't do multiple sources of data. So, Ruchi, are you clear about it now? Did I clear your confusion, Ruchi? That why case reports are not counted as observation studies by most people, by many scientists. Because in observational studies, we don't have the multiple sources of data, but in case, uh, in case reports and case studies, we have multiple sources of data. But yes, case series is counted as observational because in case series, you can have multiple sources of data. Oh, uh, you, you, you may not have multiple sources of data. And case series, and case studies, they all can be converted into any of those. If any of you have been following me on Facebook, you would know I have I conducted a lecture on that. The case report or series have a potential to be converted into a cross-sectional, case control, or cohort, or a clinical trial. Now, cohort perspective. Now, there is another one, cohort retrospective. Cohort retrospective. So cohort retrospective is when you go into the past of a patient. Now the problem is if I'm going into the past in cohort retrospective and I'm going into the past in case control, then what is the difference between case control and, and cohort? Then what is the difference between case control and cohort retrospective? In both you're going into the past. 
in both you are going into the past. Now let me give you an example. In cohort, in cohort, let's say there is a factory and in that factory there was an explosion of chemical in the year 1995. So, you know that there was an explosion and you don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about it. So you go and meet with the factory owner. Let's say this is a factory. You go and meet with the factory owner. And you said, I know that in the year 1995, you had an explosion here, a chemical explosion. And after that, your employees were affected. Can I meet with those employees? I want to interview. I want to see how many of them have developed some kind of disease. So he gives you the information, phone calls or phone numbers or uh, addresses, and you go and meet with them. And you found out that there were 100 people on that explosion day. And out of those 100, 20 are already dead by now. So only 80 are survivor, uh, survivors. And out of these 80, um, 58 have developed cancer. So you can say this chemical has a strong chance of developing cancer. So you don't know the patients yet. You don't know the patients yet. You don't know the disease yet as well. In case control, you know the disease. You know that you are studying lung cancer. Here you don't know that, that you are studying a lung cancer. You just know that there's something happened. You don't even know the patients. Here you know the disease in case control and you know the patients. In both, you are studying the effect of risk factor, but your focus here is disease and you know the disease, but here you don't focus on the disease because you don't know the disease. Guys, I asked this question to many senior scientists and they could not answer. And I was so, so disappointed, so disappointed when I asked this question to senior scientists that the majority of the senior scientists, even living in the US, they could not differentiate between retrospective cohort and case control they did not know that now you guys are have an edge over everyone else now you know this in case control we know the disease write it down in cohort retrospective we don't know the disease in cohort we don't know the disease at all we just know the risk factor comes the clinical trial and then comes the systematic review but the time is running really fast so i don't have time to go into the detail of everything otherwise i would love to explain to you what clinical trial is but it will need half an hour at least to explain what a clinical trial is and how to differentiate a clinical trial with an observational study somebody asked this question just remember in easy words in clinical trials you give an intervention as a scientist or you manipulate the environment in observational studies you don't Scientist just observes and collects data. In clinical trials, scientists not just observes, scientists actually, scientists not just observes, scientists just does an intervention, does something to the environment and follows it up and follows up. So now, I wish I had time to continue more. And there are like review articles of three types, systematic reviews, traditional reviews, and meta-analysis. And I wish I had time to go into the details, but I wanna touch base. I wanna touch base uh, really quick, the structure of your research paper. So now let's say you have conducted the study, any of your study. So you need to know how your structure of your research paper will look like. Remember, the IMRAD format. IMRAD, I for introduction, M for method, R for results, D for discussion. This is the structure of a research article. This is a structure of a research article. This is a structure of a research article. Introduction, method, results, and discussion. So you always start with an introduction. 
then you have a method section, you have a result section, and this A is for and, so don't worry about it. And then discussion, and then another section is the conclusion section. That's optional. Sometimes the discussion section can have the conclusion section as the as the last part. So don't be confused at why there is no conclusion section. Discussion and conclusion are mixed together sometimes. That's why I did not mention, because it's not mentioned in the IMRAD format. And one more section is abstract. Abstract. So yes, you can add a conclusion section. So this is how you write a research article, guys. These headings, that's it. You will have just only these headings. And then the last one is references. References. This is the difference between an article and an essay. That here you will have you will have the references in research articles. So now abstract introduction, method, results, discussion, and conclusion. So this is a structure of a paper. Now, how do you write a paper? Remember, remember a philosophy. I'll make things easy for you. You will learn a lot more secrets when you will join our training program or be a published author program. You will become invincible in research writing. But I'm going to give you some idea, some idea that Research article is like a movie. Research article is like a movie. Remember that. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by research article is like a movie? Let me give you an example. Like, for example, let's talk about a movie, Lion King. Everyone has watched the Disney movie Lion King, right? So what is the story of Lion King? Okay, we will talk about that. And then you will be able to understand how research article is written. It's that simple. It's that simple. So first of all, you need to know what each section means. Abstract is the summary. Abstract is a summary. Introduction is what is the research problem? Method is how did you solve this problem? Results is what did you find? Discussion is what do your findings mean? Conclusion is the lesson learned, take home message. And reference is the bibliography or the names in the end you see, right? So now, you know, Abdurab, I wish I could tell you the process of whole publication here today, but we don't have time, you know? We don't have time, people need to leave and we are almost approaching one hour. So that's why that's why I just wanted to give you some highlights. Everything will be covered in the full course. You will learn how to publish. In fact, we will personally help you. Once you complete your paper, we tell you how to submit, where to submit, you submit it, and how to handle the rejection and everything. So those things will be covered in that training program. So now, anyways, now, abstract is a summary. Introduction is what is the problem. Method is how did you solve the problem? Results is what did you find? Discussion is what do your findings mean? Conclusion is the lesson learned. So now the problem is, if abstract is the summary and conclusion is the lesson learned, then what is the difference between abstract and conclusion? Remember, research article is like a movie, as I said. Research article is like a movie. So abstract is the trailer of a movie. You see the trailer of a movie on Facebook, on Netflix, on um, YouTube. There are trailers of the movies. So abstract is the trailer of a movie, a 30-second trailer, what to expect in the movie without knowing the end. Sometimes you do know the end. Sometimes you don't know the end in the, app, in the trailer. But conclusion is the last scene of your movie. Last scene of your movie. So don't mix these two things. Don't mix these two things. Now, let's take an example of introduction. With, an, with a child, this baby goes to a remote location. Now he grows up over there and then he grows up and one day he comes back and take revenge. And the lesson learned is that good things happen with good people and greed is a curse, for example. 
So this is exactly what a research article is. Now, what is the method and results? It is what you see when you see the interviews of directors and producers, that how did we make the movie? How did we make the movie? So you are the director of your movie. So this is the method. You need to tell the readers, how did you make this movie? And the results are the main findings. What are the main findings of your movie? Bullet points. So this is how you have the structure of the paper and then gradually we will work on each section of your paper. First thing first is we will make sure you select a good topic. Once you select a good topic, so we have a session on topic selection how to select a topic, what topic do you select? Remember, only one thing I'm talking about today before I wrap up, that always select a topic that you are passionate about. Always select a topic that you are passionate about. Don't write a paper that you're not passionate about. The reason is passion is something that makes you energetic. It gives you more energy. You cannot get tired if you choose a topic that you are passionate about. So remember, always start with what you are passionate about and always focus on a why and a how. Don't focus on what and when, focus on a why it happened and how it happened. That's how you work on your passion. But the topic selection cannot be too broad. You have to combine two things together or three things, things together. That's the secret of topic selection, combining things together. You will learn that during the class, in the classes. And you will also learn the topic table approach that was specifically designed by me and our students feel that this is the best thing that has happened to them, the topic table approach. And another approach I have developed is topic, uh, the, the topic, topic circle approach. So you can use any of those approaches and you can finalize your topic right away, sitting there at the moment and your topic will be at hand. And then we start collecting data. The second week will be the data collection. Then the writing begins the third week from the introduction section, then the method, then the results, discussion, conclusion. Before you leave, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you.